Hey bro, my VTEC ain't kicking in, yo. Let's find out why. Let's get started. This is a 2007 Acura MDX, and it has the 3.5 V6 in it. This is the second trip around, the second time that it's here. It came in with a code P2648, which is a voltage issue at the VTEC solenoid. And also his oil pressure light or oil level light, which is connected to the oil pressure sender on these, is also starting to flicker and show that there's low oil, even though it's full. The last time around, the oil was a little low, it was very dirty, so we said, let's do an oil change, let's see if that fixes it, and see where we go from there. This issue only arises once in a while, it's not all the time. We drove it many, many times, it would not act up. We said, hey, we can't duplicate the problem, we changed your oil, new oil filter, drive it for a while and see if that helps. You drove it for a while, and it did not help all the same errors came back. It wouldn't rev past a certain amount and felt like it was in reduced power or limp home mode. So finally we're here again a second time around to really dig a little deeper. We know it's not oil level, we know it's not an oil change, it's not going to fix it. Right now you can go drive it and it won't act up. So it makes it very difficult. The next thing we did is I use Identifix here in the shop. We went through some various test procedures. We checked wiring, we checked fuses, we checked e ECM operation, we used a scan tool, and quite a lot of time went to looking into it. Here in a minute I'll show you guys what we found, and it is really crazy. But before we do that, let's take a look around this car. So here's the front of this Acura MDX. You can see that the headlamps are frosted pretty heavily. The customer is not interested in dumping a bunch of money at this time, so that will not be remedied on this trip. You can see a little damage here to the front bumper. Maybe something got hit there. As we go around to the side, we can see that the wheels are in pretty good shape. It's a little dirty. I think maybe they live on a dirt road or have driven on one lately. This one's in pretty good shape. It is not in showroom condition, but it is pretty decent. One thing to keep in mind as we go around to the back is the customer just bought this car. I mean, they literally just bought it. It is the SH all-wheel drive, which is starting to peel off and come off, but you can still read it there. It has towing package. You can see that it has the receiver hitch and also the trailer connectors there. And keep in mind, guys, too, that it was just here about a week ago, so still they just bought it. We're still getting to the bottom of the issue, and we have found what the issue is. Let's go ahead and jump under the hood. Here is our... 3.7. I am wrong, guys. The car wizard is actually wrong this time. It is not a 3.5. It is a 3.7 VTEC. Let's check the oil just to show you guys. Looks like fairly new oil, and it's right at the full mark. Actually, it looks like a little fuller than full, but it's not. It's because I tilted it. But it has plenty of oil. It's nice, clean oil as well. And really, it should because it just had an oil change. Underneath this green rag is information telling of the last shop that worked on this vehicle before the customer bought this vehicle. And they are very likely the ones responsible for the problem I'm going to show you here in a minute. Obviously I'm not going to reveal the name of the shop because I don't have six months of time to be in and out of court. I would rather spend that time running my shop and working with my guys and getting them trained up and everything and showing them chips and tricks, not standing in court fighting another shop. I don't want to do that. So we're not revealing that information. But one thing you can see that it has a brand new serpentine belt. Danielson's actually been working on this. He tried all the things that would logically cause this issue and was coming up with nothing. And together we looked at this and started putting two and two together. And we're like, somebody's been in here before. We see some electrical tape on that connector. We see that the serpentine belt, like I said, is brand new. So Danielson said, let's take off the wheel, do an actual visual inspection, and really look at what's going on here. We do see that the timing belt was recently done by the information that's underneath this rag, which you guys are not going to see. So before we jump into that, let's let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a tour of the interior. Then I'm going to take this wheel off, and we're going to show you what happened here. 
Okay, ladies and gents, I had to put it in auxiliary mode so we could see the mileage on here. And all those lights, no, this isn't a Christmas tree. They're just letting us know that they actually work. None of them are actually meaning anything in this case. But the wizard will address the real issues in a second. But if I move over, there we go. We can see it has 203, 932,000 miles on it. Wow. This has a lot. But being that this is inaccurate, the higher end of Honda, it does look very nice. We look down our dash, no cracks, no major crevices going on. Got a nice kind of a camel color. Move down, we've got some lovely plastic wood trim on here. It's looking oh so nice. Nice infotainment system between the two front seats. There is leather on our gear selector. Nice cup holders there and a split armrest in the center. The passenger seat is leather and it has a nice bolster on the side with a very large, very large headrest. As we move to that door card, looks very nice. It's got a lighter and a darker shade of tan and it's looking in good shape as well. No rips, no tears. As we move to the back seat, you'll see that it's also looking really good. It does have a third row back there. You can kind of see that there are some seat belts way in that back section. So this could really hold quite the large family. We can tell that the headliner's looking good. There's no marks, no rips, no problems going on up there. So it's looking in really good shape in here, especially considering it has 203,000 miles. As we end at our steering wheel, you'll see nice controls on there as well. Got our nice Acura symbol as well. But we're not here for the interior, even though it does look really in pretty good shape for 203,000 miles. The Wizard's got quite the conundrum going on behind that wheel. Let's get that thing off. So some of the things that really helped us to dive in to figure out what's wrong is sometimes you see indicators of something that was recently done by another shop, very recently. The timing belt was done at 202,900. And Mrs. Wizard just showed you guys in the interior it was 203 something. So it's only been about a thousand miles. So as a shop owner, it clicks in my mind. That is where we need to look, exactly where the last guy was. I bet that's where our problem is. So let me go ahead and get the wheel off and show you guys. So I know on these the VTEC system or the solenoid is right next to the timing components. And we see that a timing belt was just done. Another thing I can verify that they've been in this area is if we look at the timing tensioner as this nice shiny silver. My finger is touching there, it's actually the tensioner. So they took that off, did the timing belt service, and when they went back together they pushed this tensioner. You can, I can touching the wire, I don't know if you can see it, but it wraps underneath the tensioner. You can, I can strum it like a guitar string. They stretch the holy hell out of that wire so bad, it's actually pulling the wires out of the solenoid right here. It's stripping it out. This is also the oil pressure sending unit, which is known to fail on these as well and cause a low oil light. So we now have multiple failures. I don't think the oil pressure sensor was caused to fail by them, but definitely this is broken. It's not like wiring that you can repair and fix the wiring. It's internally pulling out of the solenoid itself. It's ruined. It should not, this wire should be coming straight up, not underneath the tensioner. So someone zipped the bolts down on the tensioner and just about ripped the wires out of the solenoid. So that's a little bit of carelessness there on whoever did that. They just put the tensioner on, got their tool and bzz, bzz, and said, yeah, that's good, call it a day. Now this problem is intermittent. It will work right now, but this stretched so tight that any kind of temperature change or the engine moves, it starts to pull the wiring, it loses connection. Just like the code says it's a voltage, a low voltage issue, it's because that wiring is literally just about pulled out of the solenoid. So that's what the problem is. We'll talk about the solution here in a minute, but before we do that, let's take a look underneath the car before we put it back down. Well, that was a short trip up, and as we can see, some of this plastic here has been hit or damaged or whatever. There's little remnants of it here and there. We'll go ahead and look around. 
There's a tiny bit of seepage here and there, which is not uncommon for something with 200,000 miles on it, but it's nothing serious warranting a teardown. There is a little bit of oil seepage going on here, but that's not why it's here, and we're not going to be going any further, as the customer stated, with any other repairs. One thing that never gets checked on these Hondas or the Acuras is this little differential right here or transfer case, I guess you could call it. You put oil in here, you drain it right here, and this is its own little oil reservoir inside of there. A lot of people will check the transmission, they'll check the oil, then they'll run back to the back, check the differential, and completely skip this little guy right here. They get skipped so much. We'll go ahead and check the brakes. They're about half gone, but they're still good. Nothing's loose. Sway bar link has some play. We'll let the customer know about that. There's a boot there is good. The other boot has a little bit of grease on it. We'll let them know about that. The strut is dry. This brake is good. This sway bar link has a little bit of play in it as well. Strut is dry. Everything else looks good there. Let's check the boot before we go, and it looks good as well. Here's another one of those drive shafts that I've mentioned like 50 times to you guys. The U-joints are not serviceable. You can see that they are staked in. There's little dots. They don't want you to service it. You buy a whole new drive shaft. Here's our carrier bearing, which seems to be in good shape. Everything else looks good. Exhaust looks good. Here's our rear differential. The boots look good there. Brakes are about half gone, but they're still good. Go to this side. Brakes are half gone. Nothing loose. Those boots are good as well. Sway bar link is good here. And here, let's go ahead and check these tires. So here we are with the date, 48th week of 2020. These tires are still good, so they doesn't need tires, luckily. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So we have pinpointed the problem, exactly why this customer is experiencing these errors with the car. It's very intermittent, but now we know exactly why. And I actually know who did it. Unfortunately, we presented the price to the customer and at this time they're not ready to pursue that. For whatever reason, they want to wait a little bit later down the road. And based on that fact, there's also going to be the same reason why we're not going to be doing these headlights. We're also not going to be doing any of the oil leaks. That is not on the table for this customer. They don't want to do that right now. Now the argument could be made, why don't you just fix that wire car wizard? The wire itself is not the problem. The solenoid is literally, the wires are pulling out of the solenoid and internally damaging the windings inside the solenoid. Finally, the wire is going to pull out and it just won't work at all anymore. It won't be intermittent, it'll be all the time. Then they'll get the message that they've been seeing all the time and it will be reduced power. Hopefully soon the customer get things in order, we can get this fixed for them, but for now we can't. It also has the issue with the low oil level, which is the oil pressure sending unit is failing as well. Again, that's not the fault of the last person. They're just known to fail. The common fix for these, and let me show you a picture. You don't just replace one little piece. They sell this for a reason. That is the entire valve block assembly with sensors and everything already included. Whenever you start having multiple issues, the common fix is to pull the old one off the whole assembly, put a new one on, you kill two birds with one stone, and the cost really isn't that much different. When we got the price together, it just didn't work out for the customer. That will be the fix when the time comes, and it will solve both of those issues for the customer. One option we can give at this moment, I'm just going to give the information that we found underneath the hood of who did this to the owner of the vehicle, and maybe they can explore any chances that they may cover it, they may fix it, they may take care of it for the customer free of charge. Sometimes shops don't like to have warranties that are transferable. Once you sell the car, you lose your warranty. 
at least it's worth a try. Maybe they'll take care of it and this customer won't have to be out the money. If not, they can bring it back here whenever the time is right for them and we'll be happy to take care of the issue for them. It's easy to say a pre-purchase inspection would have caught this. Probably not. Because it probably wouldn't have acted up. It probably wouldn't have any codes or, or anything going on. Obviously it wasn't doing that when they bought it. It slowly has gotten that way worse over time. And that particular area, you really need to focus and know exactly where you're looking. A pre-purchase inspection sometimes is misconceived that you take every bolt off, every piece off, completely tear the whole car apart and check everything. And you need to sign your life away and guarantee the whole car is perfect. No. That doesn't happen in a pre-purchase inspection. It is a cursory glance. You check everything over. You check the fluid. You make sure that things are operating correctly. It's kind of like saying, I want you to sign a paper that guarantees in the next 50 years I won't have cancer. I need you to sign your life away on that. Who can do that? No one can do that. So I'm not going to do that on a car either. I don't know the inside of this engine. I haven't pulled it all apart. No one's going to pay for that either. So I'm obviously not going to sign off on that. The pre-purchase inspection, however, would have caught the leaks that are going on with this car. And that could have been addressed with the price whenever it was purchased but very likely would not have caught the VTEC issue. So at least now we know what the problem is. The customer doesn't have to keep coming back. These intermittent problems sometimes can be troublesome. They bring it to the shop and it doesn't act up at all. Maybe it acts up every Tuesday. It just, it's just kind of a weird situation, but luckily we are able to help this customer find out what it was and we have a solution. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to find the solution on this or work on any of the cars that are in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because next week has a full schedule, which means more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, and there will be footage coming soon of a Citroen. Thanks for watching.